Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm the Mellow Mama and today I'll be talking all about must-haves for your newborn. If you're new here, what's up? I'm Kate. I talk all things conscious living and conscious respectful parenting with the help of lots of great resources, books, uh, my favorite, and of course my own personal experience as a mom. And my son is now two years old and I had a video like this. If you've been around for a long time um, or for the two years pretty much that my channel has existed, you probably saw this video and it might even be why you found my channel in the first place because it was really popular and I thought it was pretty insightful and thought-provoking my personal list of things that you need or actually need in this case uh, when having a baby for the first time or in you know adding a baby to your household the coolest thing ever though is that while making this video again uh, I have so much more insight, really, and, and clarity in terms of what I really would have preferred to use often or how I would have preferred to do things, what I really am so happy that I did, you know, the way that I did it, blah, blah, blah. So I think you guys will really like today's video, and I'm just going to hop right into it. All right, so there aren't necessarily a ton of things that I think you need when you have a newborn baby. I just want to clarify right from the beginning that people and women have been raising children happily from the newborn stage with literally nothing but what God gave them uh, in, in our personal little toolbox. So you really don't need much. I personally don't. I'm not a big fan of consumerism. I try my best to be pretty minimal. I'm not a minimalist. I'm not perfect. But I really do think that that is where the world is going for a lot of good reasons. And I think that it can be very easy to get carried away when you're building a registry or telling people what you're interested in having or when you're just scrolling through Instagram as an expectant mother or YouTube and you see all the adorable things that are available for us to purchase but not necessarily necessary by any means. Keep that in mind that, you know, when watching this video, this is my subjective list, this is my personal take on what's necessary, what I must have, but everybody's different. Um, some people can do this with less, without some of these products, some people want to have all the stuff, um, and that's totally cool. You know, whatever allows you to have peace of mind, clarity, and enjoy in this phase of your life is going to help you absolutely enjoy this time and um, be a better parent for that matter. So you do whatever makes you feel good but enjoy watching this video in the meantime and, and maybe get some ideas or whatever so here we go first things first i truly do not think it's true that there's no preparation to be done in terms of what kind of parent you want to be obviously the the real intention and mission of my channel is to help people truly enjoy the experience of being parents and truly understand that it does not have to be um the way that it's portrayed in the media or the way that people talk about it is sort of like horrible negative light, like your life is never going to be the same and not in a good way. You're not free person anymore. You're not even you anymore. That's my goal. You know, I want to revolutionize parenting in the way that people perceive children. Um, so if that sounds cool to you, you should watch some of my other videos. But I think that a must have more than anything is an understanding of what kind of parent you want to be to your child. What kind of relationship do you want to create with your child, first and foremost. And hopefully, fingers crossed, you can figure that out long before you conceive a baby. But in my case, you know, I figured that out during my pregnancy. And I did that through the following actual items on my list to start this off. So the first book that I was introduced to that totally changed my perspective on child rearing, the parent-child relationship, and life is Rosalind Ross's book, A Theory of Objectivist Parenting. Some people take this book, read it, and they're like, wow, she's super intense. And yeah, I totally get that. She's a brilliant woman. She's very direct in her approach, her writing, the way that she expresses her ideas, and they are amazing ideas. And I, I truly advocate for her work so deeply. And like I said, it changed my life. It, it, I would be a completely different parent had I not read this book. And I, I wouldn't have... Um, I wouldn't have been led to so many other wonderful pieces of writing and, and research and all kinds of stuff thanks to her. So 
that book is my number one must have uh, when you're having a baby and when you have a newborn. My other two are just as highly recommended in terms of how to prepare for your baby, how to, how to really hone this idea of like, what kind of parent do I want to be? Second book would be Magda Gerber's book, and she is the founder and creator of Respectful Parenting, RIE, Resources for Infant Educators. Again, if you're not familiar with that, please watch my video all about it. It'll definitely clear things up for you and, and get you thinking. But this book, Dear Parent, Caring for Infants with Respect, was my... I don't like using the expression my Bible because it hurts people's feelings, but I truly mean that in the best way, that I used it over and over again. I referred back to this book during my pregnancy, during every phase of my son's life. In fact, I mean, geez, he's two years old now and I still think of that book often and I still refer back to it. It is a wonderful guide and it is so tactical and, and just applicable. Anything that you're facing in terms of like, oh gosh, how do I deal with mm, respectful eating <laughs> or sleep or a routine, there's something in that book that will just clear it up in, in such a wonderful, concise way, and I love it. It's just an awesome, awesome tool. And then the third book that I, I think is truly a must-have is Janet Lensberg's book, Elevating Child Care. You can use whatever resources you want to use, but these books were seriously integral in my in early experience as a mother. They, they literally shaped my thinking in so many areas of my life aside from the parent-child relationship, but truly that is at the root of all of it. The relationship with my son would be completely different had I not read these books and reread them over and over again, and I, I can't recommend them enough. So those are my number one on the must-haves list. Next up is going to be travel gear, and there are really only a few things that I thought were truly necessary and that I used all the time when Donovan was a newborn and a little baby. And the first one was our stroller, and I was a huge fan, and I still use this stroller, and he's two years old. We use it almost every day. It, it really, truly has been an awesome, awesome investment, and it's definitely on, I think, the I, don't, I wouldn't say the lower tier in terms of price when it comes to strollers, but I have seen incredibly expensive strollers that are just hands down not even comparable to how awesome our stroller was. So we got the, what is it called again? City Mini GT, Baby Jogger, Baby, Baby Jogger City Mini GT. We got it in this teal color, which I hated. I truly wanted it in black. I think that black is just so much easier to keep clean. It just looks better. Yeah, so get it in black or don't, I don't know, live your life. I had a lot of priorities when it came to my stroller choice. One, just I wanted it to be a smooth, durable ride, uh, cost-effective, something that I would be able to use long-term, so something that would transition well from Donovan being a tiny baby to a bigger baby to a bigger baby to now his current age, which he's two and um, a bigger guy. So I think this stroller has totally met those needs. Like I said, I'm still using it today and I haven't had to buy any other stroller. I also think it's just super conveniently folded, it's very easy to transport, and in terms of accessories and different functions, I guess, the stroller is awesome. What I really was looking for, too, on top of all of that, was something that I could have my son lie flat in. If you're not familiar with Emmy Pickler, her main objective, she worked closely with Magda Gerber, the founder of Rye, and she was a pediatrician also from Hungary, and. You know, she just advocates so heavily for and researched the benefits of a naturally developed baby or child in terms of like physical development. And I, I truly believe that her work is so valuable and valid. And Emmy Pickler's bulletin number 14, which I'll link um, in the description box below, it's something that you should also, I think, invest in and read. But one of the things that she states in there is the value and importance of having your baby lying flat on their back. Um, that way they can just truly develop naturally and at their own pace. So I wanted to make sure that my stroller was also compatible with that ideology, like that Donovan could just be lying flat whenever I was rolling him around from place to place as opposed to being in a little scrunched up um, position. So we ordered the bassinet attachment and we really, really loved it. I used it 
all the time. In fact, I was really sad when he was too big for it because it was so handy, so useful, and he would sleep so well in it too when I was out. Overall, great investment. I'm so happy that I chose that one, especially I've actually talked to a lot of mothers that bought something more expensive or more intense or seemed like it had cooler this or that or the other, and they ended up buying the exact stroller that I have, and they were like, wow, I could have saved so much money had I just bought this in the first place. So I highly recommend I chose the Maxi Cozy Prius 70 for the car seat that Donovan was in and he still uses. Again, today you'll notice a theme here in this video that I was truly adamant about longevity of the products that we purchased and invested in because it is expensive to buy so much stuff at one time. Even if people are purchasing things for you, you just want to be mindful of consumption and, you know, to buy something different every, you know, however many months or for different occasions or whatever is just kind of ridiculous when there are so many great options that cater to all of your needs for like several years. Having a convertible car seat is such a great choice. You don't have to spend the money that I think this car seat is like $300 or something and truly I personally don't know if that's necessary. I've had Donovan in other car seats and I actually thought they were a little bit more functional, easier to unclip, easier to assemble and install. So there's that, but I do think that this one is super safe. I'm like referring to my car that I see out of my window, <laughs> but it is a super safe car seat. It's extremely comfortable. And what I really loved was that it was four pounds to 70 pounds and that it had a little insert for a newborn. So from the hospital, this is the car seat that my son came home in. And this is the car seat that he rode around in as a little baby. Something I do get a lot of questions about and did get a lot of questions about when Donovan was an infant is the lack of uh, travel car seat in my life. I didn't like that. I again referred back to Emmy Pickler and her work and thought that it didn't make a whole lot of sense to have my son in a scrunched up little position all day long because I see that that's just the natural tendency for a lot of reasons, you know, just simply because I think it's pretty functional and easy to have your child in the travel car seat. You know, we, we would put them in there, I'm talking figuratively, I didn't use one for this reason. You know, you put your baby in, you go to the grocery store, they're in the, well, they're in the car. Then they're in the grocery store, in the cart, in that same position, then back in the car, then maybe to another store or to somewhere in the stroller on the park, but still in that position that is not lying flat in the natural way for them to stretch, expand, move. They're just in a scrunched up little thing. And considering the fact that the material isn't necessarily good for anybody to be in cocooned into, is something to consider. And that's definitely what I considered when I just said, okay, you know what, I'll buy the bassinet, the pram attachment for my stroller and have a convertible car seat. Otherwise, you know, I'll just be carrying Donovan from inside the house to the car or placing him in his bassinet when we go places and it was completely fine. I never once had an issue with that. I never once regretted not having a travel system um, with the car seat thing and it was so easy, so functional. I think if you were a mother of multiple children, it might um, seem a little bit more complicated, but that is where the next must have comes into play. And I didn't necessarily use this a lot, but I think if you have more than one child, this is probably absolutely a must have. And that is a baby carrier or sling, whatever you prefer to use. Some people have one of each, like a more sturdy, durable looking baby carrier, and then they have a sling as well. In terms of like a baby carrier to choose specifically, I don't really have good advice in that area just because we had a pretty cheap one that someone bought for us and it was all right, but I wouldn't recommend it. So I just think, you know, do your research, I think it's a throw. Again, it's it's something that's worth investing in to have a nicer one. That way, again, it can be something that's used long term, that's used often. I'm not the biggest advocate for baby wearing. I'm not like, you have to, this is amazing, like this is the thing. And I only have one child though, and I think that makes things different. I also think that I just, I am such a huge advocate for the natural position, the natural development of a baby and just allowing them to, to be lying flat on their back as much as possible. Obviously when being carried, a lot of the time they put the legs through two little holes and I just, I just want, I wanted my son personally to always have free range of motion and, and flexibility and baby carriers definitely limit that, but in the case of 
you know, going to the grocery store with multiple children, definitely being in the airport if you're somebody that travels a lot or plans to fly a lot, it was extremely helpful in those times. If you want to be more active and let's say like go for an easy hike, there was one particular hike in Los Angeles that I loved doing with Donovan as a baby in the baby carrier that was just like very flat and very easy but um, still nice for me. Baby Carry was awesome and I think it's I think it's a must have. Next product is on my must haves list, but I never used it. I really wanted this product again mainly because I didn't want to utilize a travel car seat and this is called the Binksy Baby. This is not sponsored, it should be. I should probably talk to them and ask for one in case I have more children. But basically it just hooks to one side and then the other side of a shopping cart. It's something that I really truly wanted and thought about often in the grocery store or again while running errands myself when I had Donovan as a little baby. In terms of feeding, these are going to be things that apply to nursing moms. I was a nursing mom. Again, this is based off of my experience. So these are the products that I really loved for Donovan in terms of feeding him. <laughs> At the time of Donovan's birth, I used the Medela Pump and Style, and I truly loved it. And it actually still gets the best reviews. It's listed as like the number one um, breast pump, especially for working moms or people that are on the go. I, I love that you didn't necessarily have to plug it into an outlet. It did have like a chargeable pack. That was awesome. In general, I think it's pretty lightweight. It's very easy to use, easy to clean. It was a great product. Today, if I were to have a baby, I think I would bite the bullet, spend more money, and go with the Willow Pump 2.0, I think is what it's called, just because it's a little bit more advanced in terms of technology. I think it's more expensive and the bags are expensive, but it just gets such great reviews. It's wearable, hands-free, and those are two things that I just really, I wanted um, after using the Medela Pump and Style. Again, I loved that and I used that for a long time, but I thought about it often that I made fun of their other Medela pump um, that is hands-free, it looks like a little sports bra kind of tube top thing. I like laughed at that when I had first seen it and, and over and over again as I saw it was while I was preparing for my son and I was like, oh my gosh, like ugh, I could never just walk around like that. And then while I would be pumping after I bought this one, I was like, yeah, I really wish that I had that hands-free one. So I think I would try out the Willow, but I know, again, it's kind of expensive and I definitely don't think it's covered by insurance. So I think the Medela Pump and Style is a great option or the hands-free one is a really, really good option. Breast pads were another must-have for me. I used them every single day. Thank goodness I had them. You can get more inexpensive ones at Target. I like reusable ones, personally. I think that they do a better job and they're better for the environment. I liked the bamboo bees from Target, but I also got some from Etsy and Amazon, and I liked all of them, honestly, so I would just say, take your pick, but I would definitely advise to go with reusable ones for lots of obvious reasons. Nursing bras were absolutely a must-have for me when I would think it was a good idea to not wear a nursing bra and be like, ah, it's no big deal, I'll be fine. I regretted it. I was like, why did I not wear a nursing bra? And the same thing would go for like nursing sports bra. Again, Donovan was always with me even when I was training and sometimes I would have to stop training and he would want to nurse. And I was like, man, I, I know even a sports bra seems like it'd be easy to take down. And it's okay, but just the the benefit for me of having a nursing bra on was that it wasn't it was so functional. Like nothing was in the way or feeling tight or whatever it was extremely comfortable I could just take the little flap down and and he could eat comfortably I was comfortable it was just so much better in terms of bottles again it's been two years since my son was a new baby so I don't know if there's something that's like better and cooler and more effective but we used the Komotomo bottles and really liked them I only ever bought four I rarely fed him from a bottle but when I did these were a great option and I never had any issues with nipple confusion. Donovan drank from the boob, he drank from a bottle. All was right with the world, so I recommend those as well. I think clothing is one of the things that we can easily get carried away with when we have a new baby just because it's so exciting and fun to dress them. But I can't tell you enough how I regretted buying certain pieces that were just completely not functional. I keep saying that word, but it, it's such an important part of the newborn lifestyle. Everything needs to be functional, easy, comfortable, and I just found that a lot of clothing options and things that are, again, seen on Instagram, 
blogger mom's children. It's, a, it's like they probably put their child in this outfit for a few photos and then their child was completely uncomfortable and they changed them into what I'm going to recommend which is just the zip up from the foot to the neck sleepers and long sleeve and short sleeve plain white onesies. These are just the easiest things to clean. They're the easiest things to take your child in and out of. They're the most comfortable things for your children. And also in terms of, you know, a newborn baby, newborns sleep so much and the, the less disturbance the better. And I found that I could totally change Donovan's diaper while he was asleep if I just unzipped, took out his little feet changed him, zipped him back up and he was still asleep. As opposed to putting things over and off of the head and into the sleep, it's just like um, kind of a headache sometimes, honestly, to dress him in a more adorable way. I mean, the thing is, a newborn baby is pretty much adorable in literally anything, so you don't, again, have to get carried away. I really wish that I could go back in time and tell every person in my life that was buying us gifts, hey, zip up sleepers all day, okay? That's what we want. Even living in Los Angeles, that's really what Donovan wore more than anything. As also just the simple um, little cotton pants and a simple onesie. I mean, that's really what he wore all day, every day, but the zip up sleepers were clutch. That's my, my number one recommendation. One of my absolute favorite things that I had during Donovan's newborn and baby phase in general was the stand-up bathtub. It was awesome for so many reasons. I found that before I had it, I was like breaking my back to bathe Donovan in the normal bathtub. I did a lot of sponge baths for Donovan. I didn't really bathe him a, a ton as a newborn, but this was so handy and it's something that I recommend to every new mother because I didn't know it existed. And you can find it on Amazon. It's extremely cost effective. I would get the one in white. We had the one in blue. It's no big deal. But again, the white one's pretty and cute if that matters to you. The only thing that I would say is a downside for this is that it's a giant piece of plastic <laughs> and a metal um, stand. So it's not um, easy, easy to like hide or I guess store. I just stored it in my bathroom and it was no big deal even in a small apartment in Los Angeles. So I really recommend this product. Again, you can just stand up and bathe your baby and not, again, break your back and hurt your knees. It's like feel generally uncomfortable and your child can actually just enjoy the bath time like Donovan did. And a must have in my opinion, and I hit my chest so hard, <laughs> is actually doing a little assessment of the products that you do use in the bath with your child or after the bath. So lotion, body wash, sunscreens, diaper rash creams, making sure that you kind of figure out what ingredients are in what and why and maybe some of the effects that they could have on you or your child. The United States doesn't necessarily do a good job. I know I have people watching from all over the world, so it's important to be mindful wherever you're at, but especially if you're an American mom, do your research. There's a really great app called Think Dirty. Also, that website is a good resource. I have some big regrets in the category of diapering just because I wish that I would have cloth diapered my son for the times that he was in a diaper. I'm a huge advocate for elimination communication, which if you're not familiar with my channel, you're probably like, wait, what the heck is that? And that is diaperless um, baby. <laughs> so my son was diaper free a huge majority of the time and I would hold him over a bowl and make a sound anytime he peed. Y again, if you're new, you're probably like, okay. But honestly, it was an amazing practice. It's something that has really contributed to Donovan's general understanding and comfortability with hygiene, potty learning, all that stuff. And I really do think it's a great idea. And I think that it's awesome to get out of your comfort zone and um, close mindedness in terms of westernized culture and sort of think about how people in other places do things because that's kind of a common practice in a lot of the world. So um, check out that video if, if you're new to that concept and consider it maybe, I don't know. But I did not use cloth diaper when Donovan was not a diaper. So if we were out of the house at another person's house or if he was sleeping or in general like I was kind of busy doing stuff and I, I couldn't keep a good eye on him in terms of like when he needed to go, I would have him in a diaper and I used disposable diapers and I really wish I wouldn't have done that because today there are so many great cloth diaper options. I'm not going to recommend any specifically because again I did not personally 
use cloth diapers. I've gotten some great recommendations when I was thinking of transitioning to them, which means that there are lots of moms out there willing to give you their advice in that area. I just think it's so much better for our babies, so much better for the earth, and um, yeah, just so much better. Like, come on, Kate. I get a lot of questions about sleep in general, um, so these tools were really helpful. Donovan was such a great sleeping little baby. Thanks to Magda Gerber's advice in terms of sleep, so that's my number one must have. Educate yourself right now. Go read her book. Again, I recommended it in the very beginning part of this video, but. Dear Parent Caring for Infants with Respect, I think is where I got my general understanding and advice of sleep habits and, and routine for a newborn. And my son slept terrifically, always has, knock on wood everywhere. Really, I, I attribute it deeply to the advice that I got in that book and, and a couple of other books. If you don't feel like reading that book or ordering that book, I have a video where I talk about newborn sleep, sleep tips that I'm happy that I took and it's pretty much all the stuff that I learned from Magda Gerber, so watch that video. That's my number one must-have because sleep is such a big issue for so many people and I don't want anybody to suffer. And of course, every baby is different. You might have a difficult time regardless of any advice that you take and that's normal, it's okay. But I really do think it's helpful to at least start there. But in terms of the physical items that were great for me, a bedside bassinet is what Donovan slept in most of the time as a newborn. He slept in that for about three months and then I transitioned him to his floor mattress. We use the Minisund, I think that's how you say it, from Ikea, just because it's a much thinner mattress so, you know, I wasn't really concerned of him when he got older, like rolling off of it or something. That's a common question that I get. Um, it was completely fine and totally safe totally cozy and comfortable and if you're new to the concept of a floor bed it's a Montessori concept it's, it's a great way to give your children autonomy we had a yes space is what we would refer to his nursery as which meant it was just a safe place for him to be without my supervision technically I, I wouldn't have to be worried let's say if he were to wake up before me in the morning and start to sort of explore or scoot around on his own as he grew and I, I truly am such a big advocate for it. I, I have a video about what I would not recommend uh, to place on your registry or to purchase as a new mother and a crib I think is on there. I, I don't advocate for cribs, I think they're highly unsafe. I think the floor mattress is a much better option. Again, I'm so happy to say like now that my channel has evolved and I've got more videos that I have a video on the subject of the floor mattress specifically as well. I think it's a helpful tool but Another minimalistic aspect of this particular item is that Donovan still sleeps on the same bed, or he would, um, if we hadn't moved from Los Angeles to Ohio, because he just still sleeps on a floor mattress, and he always has, and it's been awesome. One product that I wasn't certain was a must-have when I first made my video was the Docatot, and now Looking back, I think it was absolutely something that I really valued and used a lot, and it was, again, a worthwhile investment. The only adjustment that I would make, and I think the reason why I thought uh, it wasn't something that I would definitely advise people to buy, because I did not have a Moses basket. If I would have, I would have used that Docatot 10 times more often, and it would have been a much more valuable purchase because I could use it all the time. So with a Moses basket, again, something that I didn't have and I wish that I had, all through my son's early life, especially before he was able to crawl um, or really start scooting around, was a Moses basket because if I was showering, he could be right next to me, especially during those phases of extreme clinginess where your child has a really hard time being far away from you and not seeing you, which is totally normal and developmentally appropriate a lot of times in our children's lives. In those cases, a Moses basket would have been super helpful. I could have just kind of opened my shower curtain a little bit, had him in the docketot and then in the basket, right next to me while I'm cooking, while I was cleaning. I mean, it would have been so helpful. So I really, really cannot stress enough the value of a Moses basket and some sort of safe, comfortable cushion for the inside. Being said though, the docketot by itself was extremely helpful just because when we were traveling, Donovan, we could take that and he could sleep in it. It was extremely easy to wash. I would take it outside a lot of the time. You could take it to the beach with you if you wanted to. You could take it, I don't know where, to the park. And it's a really great place for your baby to safely, comfortably rest. And it's just, again, 
so functional, super easy, and and really helpful. So I like that. I like that tool. Regarding playthings and toys, I get a ton of questions about this. What should I get for my you know zero to three month old child? And I'm gonna go ahead and refer back to, as you could have guessed it, Magda Gerber's writing. She says in terms of passive toys, which would be natural playthings, natural objects, again, sort of following um, similar to what the Montessori approach would offer. It's things that your baby has to manage and operate and sort of maneuver and figure out as opposed to something more active, flashy, bright, bright colors, very overstimulating things, right? This is what she has to say. They will only respond when the infant activates them. For example, a block or a ball or a scarf or a bowl. In other words, our active infant manipulates passive objects. In contrast, entertaining kinds of toys such as mobiles or later on wind-up toys cause a passive infant to watch an active toy. So I prefer always with Donovan to just offer him passive natural objects that he has to manipulate, maneuver, and, and really play with as opposed to things that play for him. So things that play songs, again, that light up, that are flashy, bright, and again, overstimulating. In terms of what I actually recommend, I think, first of all, the biggest must-have in terms of play is watching my Tips on Independent Play video and really, truly understanding how, how to practice those and give your children the gift of uninterrupted learning. Childhood is all about play, discovery, and they really do that best in a quiet, safe, calm, peaceful environment. That's something that is so undervalued and will bring so much peace of mind to you, your household, and your baby in this new phase. I also like to consider, if you're not gonna watch that video or read um, some of the material that I suggest in that video, to consider your child's perspective as a newborn. And I'm referring to this as a must-have. You really need to consider what it's like to be them as adults, it's even easy for us to get overstimulated and have too much interaction with technology, with other people, um, and we don't have enough time to simply reflect and be, and just be in our zone, right? In our realm of learning and understanding and interpreting. And I think that one of the funniest concerns that people talk to me about is that their child's not stimulated enough, that they're not teaching them enough, showing them enough, when really what we should be concerned about is overstimulation. Avoiding interruptions, avoiding blah, 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 getting in your child's face and having to make a comment about everything that they do, everything that they are maybe looking at or observing, and sitting back. Again, another Magda Gerber quote and reference would be observe more, do less. And again, this is not passive parenting. This is truly being in tune with your child. And, and it's so mesmerizing to see what your newborn child can discover right before your eyes when we refrain from interrupting them and we actually embrace that they are a whole being. They're a whole person with, with views, with an outlook and it is amazing what they capture and what they find interesting and it's only visible for us we can only truly interpret that if we give them space and if we truly observe and are just there um, and present with them in terms of physical stuff that you might need or that i would consider must-haves in this area would be again simple natural play things you can go on etsy and find great montessori simple wooden or other natural play things i personally had like a few i used the vegetables and fruits from ikea they're like little cloth ones he would play with those a few blocks maybe simple wooden blocks so he played with a metal salad bowl okay a cloth bowl, um, a couple of little scarves. Seriously, the most random objects your children will find interesting and gravitate to on their own. You do not have to go overboard with this because again, the best play for them, especially during their newborn phase when they can't really move or do much at all, uh, physically, they can observe so much and they're thinking and learning so rapidly. Refraining, I think, from buying a ton of toys is probably the best thing that you can do. Also, a quilt, I think, is a must-have. A great way to get outside and truly just enjoy being together, doing what I'm talking about. 
but just being present, observing what your child's observing, and just being with them is such an amazing thing. It's something that I utilize almost every single day and still do. I, I was really fortunate that my mom made us two different high quality quilts, but I think that a bigger quality blanket doesn't have to be a quilt. I just think that's the most sturdy surface, especially when sometimes you're outdoors, if there's like rocks or anything, um, this will be like a soft cushiony surface for your child to lay on and do whatever they're going to do. Books. I, again, try to be more minimalistic, but there are books that I want to read over and over again to Donovan. So finding out your favorite books and having them in your nursery or your household, I think are, it's just, that's definitely a must-have in my opinion. My last set of must-haves are related to self-care because I truly believe that when you are taking care of yourself, you can actually have something to give to the people around you. And now you've not just got a spouse, maybe, or a boyfriend, or whoever, you've also got a child that needs your a lot of your time, energy, effort, love, whatever. I think a gym membership is number one. Some sort of exercise, you've got to get into the habit of making that a priority. I just made a video about gym intimidation if you want to watch that. I've got other exercise videos if you want to watch those, but I think that having a gym membership or a yoga studio membership, a dance class membership, whatever gets you moving, physically active, challenging your body, make that a priority. I think that is a must-have. Journaling is also a must-have for me. You can do a sort of future self journal, a gratitude journal. You can just journal your daily experience. I've found personally that that's sort of what I've gravitated to in my journaling as time has gone by. I think that it's been the most amazing release of tension for me. So in those months, those first months of being a mother, you might feel all kinds of things that you've never felt before, you've ex you're gonna experience things that you've never experienced before, and writing them down as opposed to venting to people about your experience or whatever. Um, some people could also, also say, you know, talk to God first. This is not a religious channel by any means. However, I do think that um, journaling is a wonderful positive way just like some, some might use prayer, sort of talk about your, your life experience in a way that releases tension, but also just releases a sort of sense of gratitude, of abundance. Journaling, in my opinion, especially with a newborn, just taking that 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever to yourself to pour out is, is an amazing exercise. I definitely think that meditation is my other must have. Just to have peace, quiet, clarity to determine your goals, who you are, where you're coming from, what your intention is for the day or to wrap up the day. So, so valuable. My last must have is anything that's going to make your space feel clean, comfortable, and cozy during this time because I know for a lot of people, um, you know, they say when you feel stressed or a lot of tension, one of the first things that you can do to feel better is to clean up your space, to get organizing. Plants for me is a big one that makes my space feel more fresh, beautiful, homey, and clean. Natural oils and a diffuser are really also a great asset and a wonderful tool to use when you're trying to have some more clarity. Also candles, again, sensory things that make you feel like, okay, I'm in a fresh, clean space smells good, it looks beautiful, that's going to help you so much in this time, along with maybe a general cleaning service. If you're somebody that has a hard time keeping up with the general to-do list of owning or having your home, I would say that ask if you're somebody that's receiving gifts for a cleaning service for the first maybe one or two months of having a newborn. That's it for my must-haves list. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you. I know it can be a little bit overwhelming to prepare for a baby and there's so much information being shared and um, in general I just hope that this was clear, concise, to the point and beneficial for everybody watching. So thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Check out all of my other videos. I think they're wonderfully helpful and great tools. That is the mission and goal of my channel after all uh, for people preparing to be parents especially. And yeah, so please hit the notification bell for notifications every time I post a new video. I wish you could comment. You probably can't because my comments have been disabled forever. Um, but if you want to get in touch with me or if you have questions or comments, I would love to have them and answer them for you. Just follow me on Instagram at the Mellow Mama or check out the description box below for different ways to contact me and work with me. 
I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you on the next one.